That was a photo of me the day I was burned by hot asphalt. So I went over and shut the valve off. Well, it was pump was going the wrong way. It was pumping out of their tank into our trailer. So when I closed it, it blew. I mean, I didn't give it my hand out the way. And just the power of the pump broke that right off. And it just it went flying. I mean, I, I kind of seen it coming at me. I ducked, ran to the side of the trailer. And the kid behind me, you know, are you okay? I yelled at him, go get some water. So I dumped water on my head. And I just knew that you got to get it cool. It was 325 degrees. And uh, you just had to let it burn. So I got the water to cool it down. And uh, I'm just hoping the damages aren't too bad. I was in the hospital for three weeks. I was burnt 35% uh, of my uh, my upper body. I was off work for eight months. I was I was able to do a lot of things um, a little bit sooner than that. But actually, when I started back to work in, in eight months later, uh, the first day I remember was was very stressful, very very physically hard for me to to get through that first day. Even burns are serious business. They can be painful, long-lasting life events that affect not only those injured but their friends, family, and co-workers. Picture this, a pan with bacon frying. Liquid asphalt can heat to similar temperatures, upwards of 350 degrees, and when asphalt comes in contact with your skin, it will not come off. The material continues to cook the victim's flesh. It is best to avoid asphalt burns at all costs. Where safety controls have been built in, make full use of them. Wearing personal protection equipment, or PPE, at all times can be a lifesaver. Following your company or organization's safety rules and procedures is an important preventative step. But accidents do happen, however. And when all else fails, knowing the correct first aid is extremely important. If you or a coworker experience an asphalt burn, it is important to keep it cool. Well, first step is to make sure that emergency help is on the way. Uh, calling 911 or your emergency numbers to get uh, either in-plant resources there or to get the, the community's emergency responders in route is important. The next step is to begin cooling of that burn. Use water, a drench shower if you have it, uh, whatever you can to do that. As long as it's not hot water, that's good. You don't have to have ice cold water. The water and flowing water pull heat away from the material, pull heat away from the skin, and help uh, minimize uh, the extent of the burn. In the event of an asphalt burn in the workplace, follow these steps. Notify others. Call for help. Immediately address any airway, breathing, or circulation concerns. Start cooling. Quickly place the affected area under running, flowing water. Do not remove asphalt from the skin. Leave the burn uncovered. Medical experts advise that immediate cooling is the best treatment. Because the hot asphalt continues to burn and do continual damage to the skin, it is important to cool the burn until you get the temperature down to room temperature. This cooling process can take as long as 15 to 20 minutes. Spills in the asphalt lab can be particularly dangerous. Inattention and failure to use proper PPE can easily result in an asphalt burn. In this scenario, one lab worker is distracted by her phone and the other failed to wear his lab coat while transporting hot liquid asphalt in an open container. It is important to know where the nearest source of water is and to help the victim get to the water source immediately. You must cool the burn for an extended amount of time with the water. Emergency personnel may assist in cooling if the patient is not in shock or if no other physical symptoms take importance over the burn. It is vital to inform EMS professionals about your company's asphalt burn procedures as they arrive. Exercising caution at all times is important. This employee failed to notice that there was a small amount of moisture in the can before he collected a hot asphalt sample. This mistake can easily result in an asphalt splash. In some situations, running water is not available immediately, and there may not be a co-worker present to assist in the treatment. In those cases, 
make sure you call for help and use whatever cooling source you can find. Plan ahead and make sure you have enough portable water on the job for first aid. Cool water from a water cooler or even bottled water poured on a burn can be beneficial while waiting for help to arrive. When workers are out in the field, you're even less likely to find sources of running water. If a burn occurs, look for an ice cooler and utilize it for cooling the burn. Commercial cold packs can also be stored in trucks and aid in cooling the temperature of the burn. Asphalt burns to the eyes are some of the most serious possible injuries. When possible, lay the person on their back. Flush with running water for at least 20 minutes by allowing the water to flow over the bridge of the nose to the eyes. If an eyewash station is available, direct the victim to the eyewash station. You may have to help the victim by physically holding their eyelids open so the water can cool the burn. Urgent medical attention is required for burns to the face and eyes. Using face shields, safety glasses, and protective goggles can help prevent burns when these accidents occur. Asphalt is insulating and it will just keep burning you so you need to do everything you can to find a cold water source and just cool that as asphalt burn immediately. Often an asphalt burn victim will be disoriented or in shock and be reluctant to any first aid attempts. It may be necessary to physically force the victim to the nearest water source. Solicit help from other co-workers if necessary but cooling those burns can greatly decrease the severity of the burns. Easiest way for the victim to be calmed down is to realize that, that help is on the way and that, that the cooling that's, that's taking place is the very best thing that should be happening at that point. And uh, realize they are in a tremendous amount of pain and that this will help reduce the pain. Minutes will seem like hours uh, and that's why having uh, their co-workers take the right steps for them, you know, get them out of contaminated PPE, get them you know, under a shower or under some flowing water and direct them and, and, and keep them under control is, is the best steps for them. Wearing the proper PPE can prevent or greatly lessen the severity of an asphalt burn. Dan England experienced a dramatic example of how wearing PPE can literally save your skin. I felt that the setup was going to put me in very close proximity and uh, I had brought uh, safety gear with me to make sure that uh, I wasn't going to get splashed because it looked certain uh, that that was going to happen during the day. So I had uh, heavy coveralls, I had uh, gauntlets that fit underneath of the coveralls, gloves over top of my hands. Uh, I had a wrap that I put around my neck and pulled up the collar on the coveralls and a full face respirator. As I started to put the, the gear on, uh, employees of this, uh, at this emulsion plant and truck drivers that were there uh, began to laugh and ridicule me. Uh, they commented that uh, they'd be calling for an ambulance for me within an hour because uh, I'd be uh, heat stroked from wearing all this gear. And I just kind of laughed back and looked around and noted that many of them had scars on their arms uh, uh, or neck and uh, thought, hey, you know, I'm going to be on the firing line today, so uh, you guys can laugh all you want to. About a half hour later, as we were getting started, uh, the first fill of this uh, wagon, our, our little mixed tank, a flex hose had been attached. Again, this was all very ad hoc at this uh, facility. Um, when the pump was energized to introduce asphalt into the mix tank, the flex line uh, was not coupled properly. It, uh, as the line pressured up, the, the flex line popped off and uh, a stream of hot asphalt hit me in the midsection and the, the hose continued to rise. The gentleman operating the uh, pump saw what was happening uh, immediately and it hit the, the off button. As the pump depressurized, I got a second coating that covered the whole front half of my body. Uh, temperature roughly 370 degrees. I realized that was uh, very lucky that uh, I didn't get uh, killed uh, in that incident. Burns result from accidents on the job, and we rarely see them coming. 
Simple tasks we perform every day can sometimes put us in serious danger when one element varies. Connecting hoses to trucks or collecting a sample are tasks we often do several times a day. But being prepared for an asphalt burn and knowing where the nearest source of water is can be critically important for our safety and the safety of our co-workers. Pay attention. Listen to what people are telling you. Don't think that it won't hurt you, because if it's on you, you're burnt. Um, that's the biggest thing that I try to I tell people. Even if you get a spot on you, you're burnt. If you get a lot on you, you're burnt really bad. Listen to the policies and procedures that the company tells you. Wear your PPE, wear your face shield, wear your gloves, your long sleeves. Everything you can do to protect yourself is going to make an accident situation much, much less painful. Unfortunately, asphalt burns may still occur. But if they do, remember to keep it cool and quickly place the affected areas under cool water. Always know your nearest source of water. Cool the burn to room temperature, whether it is under a faucet, a shower, a hose, an eye wash, or another water source, make certain you cool that burn until help arrives.